Oh, Waffle, what have you chewed now? So instead of throwing this clock away, we're going to repair the cord here. Um, checking the cord for damages, it looks like as we go down, making sure we check the entire length for teeth marks, um, we only have a very little bit that's damaged uh, in this area right here. So instead of replacing the cord, we're just going to cut out this short section that's damaged and then splice it together. Uh, one thing of note is the plug is polarized, meaning this prong is slightly wider than this prong. And it's very important to keep that straight on the cord. So it matters if we splice it this way or if one side's inverted in the other way. Uh, the cord is marked with lettering. You can see right in here on one side. So that'll enable us to, after we cut and clean up the ends, to make sure we are still straight. Uh, if there is no lettering, I'd probably try and match the bite marks to see if we could get it right. And if it wasn't obvious from the bite marks, uh, then we're probably opening up the radio and looking inside and figuring out which side is which from there. Uh, alternately, if this damage was longer, we'd probably cut the cord back and then splice a new cord on. Again, making sure we're careful of polarity um, or opening it up and just putting a brand new one on uh, right from the scratch. Uh, the reason plugs are polarized is um, you want the switch side of the load uh, to be on the hot side. So your switches are always on the hot side, uh, which is the thin prong, um, as the neutral side goes back to your circuit panel in your house and to ground. So if you had your neutral side switched and you turned it off, the hot side is still live in your device. If it was to find a path to ground, it could still electrocute you. So with all that in mind, um, let's cut the cord and uh, start splicing it together. We're going to add shrink wrap on these before we put them together. We're also going to make sure we've split the wire far enough down that the uh, when we slide the shrink wrap on and then solder, heat from the solder won't activate the shrink wrap. Uh, we're, so we're going to use three pieces of shrink wrap, one for each connection and then one overall for the cord. We're also going to use butt joints. So we're going to connect like this and give them a nice twist. Uh, we're going to be using butt joints instead of um, a pigtail so that when, if there's ever strain on the wire or tension on the wire, um, it doesn't stress the wire too much uh, or, or break it at a connection where it's been bent. So with that said, let's get to it. I've lined up the lettering on the wires, uh, twisted the ones that matched, and now we will solder it together. We have a slight tug on these to make sure there's well connected and it looks like we have a good connection. Um, double check the lettering. So we have lettering there and on this side. Uh, 
there's the lettering right there. So if you follow that up on this side through the connection and we match up with lettering. So we're straight. Uh, we'll pull over the, the shrink wrap and shrink it down. So we're gonna use the hot air gun to shrink the shrink wrap. Uh, you can use a lighter, but you have to be uh, pretty careful. You don't melt or over overheat the shrink tube. So we have the heat gun set to 150. And there it goes. Doesn't take much to shrink it. And do both sides. Make sure we have it nice and tight. Now we'll pull the big one over top. And there we go. All back together and ready for testing. The clock is back working and saved from the electronics recycling bin. With this project complete, give me a thumbs up if you like it and hit subscribe if you'd like to see more like it. Thanks for watching.